Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the third video in the if statements. And in this one, I'm just gonna give you a couple little examples of using ifs, just to hopefully get it kind of stuck in your head. Okay, so in this first example, we're going to take input and we're gonna give some feedback based on the age. And I'm gonna show you that the some of the problems you might encounter when taking input and trying to do something based on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get input and we're gonna say, what is your age? And based on this input, I'm going to say if age is greater than or equal to zero and age is less than or let's say less than 21, then print, sorry, you're too young. And we'll say if age is greater than or equal to 21 and age is less than 65, print, uh, yep you're good to go and if age is group lf age is greater than or equal to 65 and age is less than 125 print uh let's say sorry you're too old we have to put sorry because we are very polite people uh, and anything else in, we're going to say invalid age. Okay, so we'll assume negative ages and ages over 125 are invalid. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this program and see what happens. Everything should work, right? Well, I guess we'll find out in just a second. So we run this, and let's say we type in 55, and look at that. We get an error. So it's pointing us. So I just want to say also, it's a very very important to get used to reading these statements. I know they can kind of look confusing and there's probably stuff in here you don't understand and that's okay, but pick out the stuff you do know and and try to be able to analyze your errors. Don't just go back and stare at the code. Look at what the error says first. So the error is telling you that there is a type error, meaning we are it looks like we're doing something with strings and integers that we shouldn't be doing. And the error is actually at this first line, the very first line on line four. So if I go back to line four and I'm looking at this, it means after I get my input, which is 55, which is a number, right? I'm getting a type error here where it's saying something about age. So it says string in integer. Okay, so when you think about that, you're probably wondering, all right, well, where's the string coming from? say well maybe the string is coming from the input and that's actually true the string is coming from the input in this case input will always return a string so if input always returns a string then we need to change it to an integer before we can actually use these operators down here to check if it's equal to a number or less than or equal to any number so I need to convert all my ages into ints so your first inclination might to might be to do something like this. You might be like, yeah, well, I'll just go ahead and change all these like I did before. I take the variable, I put the variable in here, and so on. But that means I'm typing this six times. And you know what? This will work. I'll go ahead and do it just to show you that it works. But this is about the ugliest solution we could do. Okay, so now if, if I run this, uh, and I go and I type 55 again. I will say it'll say yep. You're good to go Okay, and I'm not quite sure what this red over here is, but not important So close that and that works, but let me back this up I'm backing this up using control Z by the way uh, Let's back this up and and think about the other way we could do this now your other inclination might be to do something like this You're like oh well, I'll just go ahead and change it into age here but if you run this you're gonna say well, I can't do that okay so we actually need to do it to maybe the other side so let's put a function inside of a function so input inside of this so first thing that happens is this it does the input then whatever the input becomes it will get changed into an integer so input goes inside the int function all right, so that's this is the best way to do it because this is the most uh, concise and most simple way to do this thing. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and run it again. You type 55, and it says, yep, you're good to go. Uh, let's go ahead and try another one. Let's try 10. Sorry, you're too young. Works just fine. Run it again. And let's give it a number that is out of range, invalid age, and close. Okay, so this works just fine, except for one thing. Let's say that your user isn't the nicest user and they want to figure out how to crash your program. And this program is very easy to crash. Uh, it comes up, comes down to this statement here. If I type in an invalid thing for age, meaning I type in something that's not an integer, you're gonna get some errors. So let's say I the person's coming along, it says, what is your age? And they say, I'm not, telling you my age okay and they type that in instead and they hit enter and you're gonna get this uh, crash here where it says uh, invalid literal for integer with base 10 you don't know what base 10 means unless you've watched the fundamental videos uh, and it says this right here so it's saying that this error is because we put the wrong value in for an integer all right so in this case this statement is not very safe because the user has to type in a number for it to actually work. If they don't type in a number, it won't work. They can type a float and they can type an int, but anything other than that, uh, actually a Boolean will work as well, but anything other than those, it's gonna end up crashing. So for that, you need to make sure that you're careful with user input when you're running these programs. Later on, I'm gonna show you, uh, actually pretty soon, I'm gonna show you uh, how to check for errors on this. Okay, so to make sure that the user is putting in the correct information. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do another thing. I'm actually going to show you a new operator now. And this is called the is operator. Uh, and we're going to say type, um, what to say, uh, any input. Okay, and then on what's going to happen is, um, actually, let me, let's, uh, any input will be equal to a string. So instead, let's go ahead and make a, a few variables here. Uh, let's go ahead and make a decimal, make an int, make a boolean, make a string. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is, can be useful, but honestly, in Python, you really don't want to be doing this. If you're doing this, you're probably doing something wrong with the code, meaning you're not structuring your code correctly. Your code will work, it won't be a problem, but to be honest, it's pro you're probably doing bad coding practice. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now how to check type, variable type. You're, you should know how to do that just by doing this, print type C, and I run this and it'll tell me that that is a Boolean. But let's say that I wanna check if the variable I'm using, what type it is. So if I say if type A is, this is the new statement here, this is is, okay. So is, uh, Let's actually take these out. I'm going to switch this around a little bit. We're just going to say, we're just going to take this variable. I'm going to change this variable, and then we'll double check each time. Okay? We'll make a long else if statement instead of multiple if statements like I was planning. I think that'll be a little more concise. Okay? Uh, so if type A is a float, print this is a float. Okay? So if I run this, it will say this is a float. Now. Because, if you remember, uh, variables in Python are dynamically typed, meaning that a variable can change from one minute to the next. One minute it can be a Boolean, the next minute it can be a float, the next minute it can be a string. And if you need to see the difference between that and statically typed variables, go back to the variable section and there's a, a document and there are posts on the website on leftpeel.com uh, that compares dynamic and static typing. So go back and take a look at that. Uh, you should have looked at it when you went through that section, uh, but if you didn't, go back and check it out. 
Okay, so you can check using this. Now, as I said before, if you're doing this, you're probably doing something wrong with your code, so just be careful. All right, uh, this is statement though, it's a little different than the equals. So I can put equals here, and guess what? It will also print out the exact same thing. In this case, they will both print out the same because type A also is float. It will return float. And this float here and this float here represent the same thing. And by same thing, I'm, I don't mean they're similar. I mean they're exactly the same thing. And that's what is does. Is checks if they're exactly the same thing. Okay, so that means in the computer somewhere there's something, there's a thing called float. And imagine it's just like a, a, a box that says float. And type A and, and float here are both that exact same box. Now, if I do something like equals, for example, let's say I said B is equal to 5.6, and I said if A is equal to B. A and B are two separate boxes, but they have the same value. So if you're using this double equals, it means you're checking, do these two things have the same value or not? While this is, is checking if these two things are exactly the same thing. All right, so that's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, that one, double equals, is checking if they're the same value, which they are actually the same value. If I do this, these are the same value, but they're also the same thing. Okay, makes sense. It's kind of like if I, if I have twins, twins are equal values. They look the same, but they're different people. Um, if I compare them to each other, if I say if if Sally is Sue and say Sally and Sue are identical twins, then I would say no, they're, Sally is not Sue, but I would say is Sally equivalent to Sue? You could say yes because they're identical. Let's put it that way. All right, uh, elif uh, type uh, a. Let me get rid of this variable here and is string print this is a string and I'm going to copy this line so I don't have to keep typing this all out and let's say int integer and boolean boolean else if print I don't recognize that type okay so if I change this up here to be 5 it's gonna tell me it's an integer if I type true it'll tell me it's a boolean if I put a string it'll say it's a string and if I do this it will also tell me this is a string all right so lots of cool things you can do here uh, Let's do something that's not either of them. So let's maybe say, well, let's see if I think I might be able to do this here. There we go. So if I put a print statement in, it's going to print that out. Say I don't recognize that type. So oddly, print is actually returning a type. So if I if I look at uh, print type of a. Well, let's, let's do it in our in our statement down here. So let's say I don't recognize the. And we're going to use our skills of concatenation here. Type uh, a plus. Okay, and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to convert this to a string as well because remember everything in a print statement needs to be a string. So if I say I don't recognize the, and then I convert this to a string type, it'll tell me what type that actually is. So let's run this and it says I don't recognize the class none type type. Alright, pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you something you won't see until later but let's do this. It says I don't recognize the class list type. Alright, kind of interesting. Okay, so let's go back to being an integer and it changes it to an integer. Alright, so I want to say this one more time if you're doing this in your code, for whatever reason, you're probably not structuring your code correctly. But I do want to show you the is operator, explain the difference there, 
and I also want to show you uh, that you can check type and it can be useful in certain very very niche circumstances uh, if you're doing it try to find a way around it otherwise uh, go ahead you can do it it's possible to do in Python all right uh, in the next video we're gonna do nested if statements and that'll be a quick one pretty much it for all of these conditional statements. All right, I will see you in the next video.